Hey everybody, before we get started, I just want to let you know I'm probably going to make a few goofs in this run through and if you want to know what they are, be sure to set your subtitles onto the Klingon channel. That's right, the Klingon channel where all of my mistakes will be dutifully recorded. Kapla! And now, hey, Rado runs through Jump Drive, which is a very cool cross between designer Tom Lehman's Race for the Galaxy, which is one of the most popular, well-loved modern designer card games on the market, and another one of Tom's games, The City, which was already kind of a light rethemed version of Race for the Galaxy, but now he's merged those two different approaches to the same basic idea into a beautiful, beautiful baby, which is Jump Drive, and I'm going to show you how it works today in a quick two-player game. And when I say quick, I mean it. This game, you're generally going to finish it in, you know, five, six, or seven rounds. I mean, you jump to warp speed almost immediately, so let me show you how that works. Here's uh, the setup. There's a whole bunch of point trackers. We are racing to be the first player to score 50 points, exactly like the city. And um, at the beginning of the game, exactly like the city, everybody gets a starting hand of seven. Three, four, five, six, seven. Although our real starting hand is five because now we have to take what we've just drawn and discard two cards put them in the discard pile. So let's take a look and see what I got. All right, I've, I've got some Space Marines, which is great because it gives me the military I need to conquer this rebel outpost. Got a Rosetta Stone World and some Uplift Researchers, Asteroid Belt. Ooh, another Rebel Bit, two Rebel. Um, and some Galactic Trendsetters, Asteroid Belt. All right, so two of these cards have to go. And uh, this is interesting. It's a bit dangerous, but I could, based on this hand, I could start out going for kind of a military-focused strategy, because once I get these Space Marines into play, I should say, by the way, what you're looking at here, every, there are two types of cards in the game. There are planets and technologies, or developments, I think they're called. Um, to put a card into play, generally, not always, but usually, you have to discard however many cards it says. So, to get this asteroid base, into, or the asteroid belt into play, I would have to discard two other cards. And those might be cards I desperately want to get into play. That's the crux of the decision making of this game. Which cards do you play, and which cards do you sacrifice to play them? Um, now, there are a few um, ex exceptions to that. The biggest one is when you have a planet that has this red outline. That means this planet cannot be colonized. Me trying to get this asteroid belt means I have to colonize it by discarding two cards. I spend the resources to colonize this asteroid belt, and then it's mine, and it gives me these abilities for the rest of the game. Military planets cannot be colonized. They can only be taken over with military strength. So to get this um, rebel outpost, which increases my military strength by one, I have to have five military strength. And then this increases my military strength more, which means I then have enough military to get this rebel base, as an example. So getting this, that could then lead to this. But to get to this, I need five total military strength. And that's where these space marines could help out. They would give me two of the five strength I need to get this into play, which would then let me get this into play. So that's kind of a nice long-term strategy. But the problem is, none of these other cards do any of them? Nope, none of them help me with military. Uh, Galactic Trendsetters, they earn me, they, these means I'm cool and hip and fashionable. They're expensive, but I start earning points, and more points the more trendy I am. Uplift Researchers, these give me points and income based on how much alien tech, which is this symbol. And, you know, and this is the only alien tech symbol I got, so this doesn't really combo with anything else. Um, a Rosetta Stone World. So, this means, oh, 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 oh. Um, oh, okay. Well, this is kind of nice. Its special power is it reduces um, two, minus two costs or plus two military against yellow worlds, against alien worlds. So if I wanted to conquer an alien planet, this would help me do it because it would make it cheaper. But these two things, they're not particularly alien because they're not yellow. So if I, if, if, this could lead to conquering another yellow planet, which could give me more strength to do this and that and the other. So this combos a little bit, but not as well as I would like. Hmm, all right. So I got to decide. Remember, I'm cutting out two cards. I think um, Galactic Trendsetters are great, but they really kind of combo with themselves. They also combo with, um, what is it, Galactic Advertising, but I didn't have any advertising in my hand. So I'm going to get rid of those, and I got to get rid of one more. So I could hold on to these for now and hope I get some more military-based cards that will help me lead towards this, but this is a gamble. It might not pay off. Instead, I could dump these really expensive cards and keep the cheap stuff 
and, um, you know, and try to build up a different way. I think I'm going to do it. This is very dangerous, but I'm going to keep these three because another thing, um, ultimately, I'm going to have five cards in my hand. Once I get rid of one more, I'm going to have a starting hand of five, say. You may notice there's these survey teams. There's one for each player. We're playing a two-player game, so there's two of these here. One of these is mine. It's like I have another card in my hand, which increases my military. And so having these, um, I mean, you know, basically, it's like I have it in my hand, so I can play it, but it doesn't, it doesn't count towards my hand limit. So that's, that's some military. So I've got some military, but i got to decide which non-military card am I getting rid of. And this is a dangerous thing. If I don't find the right cards, I'll never get high enough to build these, and Jen might outstrip me. So I know I'm risking it. Um, so to be able to find those military cards, I want to build something else that will increase my income. And this increases my income by two, plus one for mining robots. This doesn't increase my income at all, but it helps me military against yellow cards. All right, this is really great if I get more alien cards. I don't have any. That's the other thing I've dumped. So we'll see how well my little mini um, deck building, my hand building, has paid off. All right, now let's see what Jen's got. A military convoy. Why don't I have a military convoy? Oh, shoot. Uh, all right, so there's some military. Trade Pact, which is the opposite. This gives you a power if you haven't really invested in military. Dropships increases your military by three. And Oh, Jen's also got Space Marines. Wow. So there's three military cards for her and, and, um, a, and not an alien uh, uh, military planet, but a gene planet. Wow. And then another, five of Jen's starting cards are military-based. And then a colony that's really kind of not, and these are kind of anti-military. I think that's a no-brainer. We're both going heavy military in this game. And Jen, she's very confident. This is a strong, strong military hand. Mine is really pretty iffy. I'm going to need a little bit of luck. I'm already kind of regretting it. I probably should have gone with just more of a general purpose strategy. Because, you know, I could have just... Uh, well, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Okay. So anyway, we are now set up or ready to go. And here's the way the game works. It's a nice little summary card. Every round, each player is going to place... This is kind of weird. This is an oversight on their part, I think. Um, they, you can play zero, one, or two cards. It says one or two, but you can choose to play zero cards. If you do that, that means on this turn you get to explore. So if you play zero cards, you grab one of these explore tiles, which means you're going to increase your hand by two. The more you explore, the more stuff you have in your hand, the more options you've got. And maybe I want to explore right off the bat so I can find some more military cards to buff out my military strength. So if you play zero cards, you're going to explore. Otherwise, you can play one or two cards. Um, and if you do that, you've got to pay for them. So um, if you play only one card, you get kind of a discount. It's a little bit cheaper, kind of, sort of. It's different depending on whether you play a technology or a planet card. But if you only play one, you get, um, you, you, you get a discount on it. It costs one less to play a uh, single di uh, discovery card or technology card. If you play a single planet and nothing else, you got to pay full price, but then you immediately get to draw one card afterwards but you got to pay full price. Now, if instead you play two cards, then you got to pay full price. There's no discount and there's no bonus draw afterwards. So that's the thing. We're racing to get to 50 points. We want to play two cards per turn, but then that means we, do, um, we have to pay full price. So anyway, what am I going to do? Okay. Um, you know what? I think I'm, for starters, for starters, for starters, well, here's the deal. If I play this asteroid belt, which will give me two income at the end of my round, that means I, I, you know, I'll have to give up two cards right now to play this card. But then at the end of my round, I'll start drawing two cards every turn, which will up my chances of finding uh, the other military I need to flesh out my strategy. But to get rid of two cards, I'll have to get rid of some of my military strategy. Urgh. So, so that's the thing. I'm not set in stone. I mean, even though I've got a bunch of military cards, I can say, you know what, I'm just going to use them to get a military base. I'm going to dump these. I don't even care about military. Um, because I played this by itself, I'll get a reward, and then at the end of my turn, I'll draw two more cards, and I can just say, hey, I'm just going to start exploring and exploiting this asteroid belt, and hopefully that will give me future resources I need. Or I could say, you know what, this turn, I remember, remember these survey belt, these were in my hands. I could play this. If I play a development by itself, I get a discount of one. So this would be free. And this gives me some military. Not enough, 
Um, you know, because then if I get these space marines into play, I've got three military. It's still not enough. But if I start exploring, hopefully I'll find a military planet that I could conquer with only three military, let's say. I'm so, it's so risky. But you know what? Okay. Or I could play this and I could play, oh, this is interesting. I could play this and play the Rosetta Stone world. Now, this means I get four uh, explore icons. That means every time I explore, I get to draw four extra cards. That gives me so much more control over what I'm searching for. But if I play both of these, since I'm playing two cards, I don't get a discount. I will have to discard three cards, which means I'll probably just throw away all of these military and I'll give up on my military strategy. But I will, I will be taking a heavy explore-based strategy, which gives me a lot of... That's really interesting. I know I started out saying I was going to do military, but in this game, you can turn your strategy on a dime, especially at the beginning. Okay, this is what I'm going to declare right at the beginning. I am playing two cards. One of them is my survey team. One of them is another thing. Everybody, and now, and now I wait for everybody else, because we all do this simultaneously. Now, Jen, she loves all this military. She definitely wants to get this going. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Um, what is she going to do? Yeah, Jen, I think, is going to... She's also... She declares she's going to play her survey card as well. So everybody's got their survey teams out. And she's also going to play a planet. This amphibious uplift race and this insect, they are exactly... They're functionally the same. So she would rather go out and... They both need military to conquer them. She'd rather conquer... Um, humanoid frogs than humanoid bugs because bugs are gross and scary. So she's going to go there. Right. We have both declared. Now everybody reveals and goes on ahead and resolves their stuff. I'm not, I'm not going to do it the same time because i got to do it one at a time. So I reveal my survey team um, and I reveal my Rosetta Stone. Since I played two, got to pay full price, which is one, two, three. I'm going to discard all of this military stuff. I've just abandoned it. And, um, but now I am a supremely good explorer, which I will use next turn by exploring, potentially. And I'm going to need to because, hey, I'm down to one card in my hand. If I don't start exploring, I'm not going to be able to do much. So I will use my survey team and they will take the lessons learned on that Rosetta Stone world and I'll explore really, really well next turn. Jen, meanwhile, she declares, hey, here's my survey team, which is going to cost her to discard one. And here's a um, amphibious roughly face. Now, first of all, she has to discard one card for that survey team. She will discard the insectoid race. Will she? <sighs> no, she'll, I mean, she would love these dropships and increases her military quite a bit, but she'd have to give up four cards for this or three if she plays it by itself. That's pretty expensive. She will get rid of the dropship. Although, man, they start earning her two points, two victory points every turn. What is she going to do? If she had waited, she could have played this by itself. It would have been totally free. Totally free. And you can't see her car, so let's zoom out a little bit. There we go. Totally free. And then that means she could get, yeah. But she wanted to speed it up. Hmm. No, okay. I didn't change her mind. She did not. She just played a single card. And it's a survey team. We knew that. And she gets a one discount because she played it by itself. So she doesn't have to give up anything in her hand. So that was it. That's what she did instead. All right. Now, at the end of the turn, we get our, we score victory points and make income based on what we've got. Um, this Rosetta Stone world gives me three points. I'm making points, making it rain. And let's put these over here away from the big pile. And my income is one plus zero. I drew one card. I found some more drop ships. All right. Um, right. And now Jen, her income, she gets no points and she gets one. So that's it. But she's still got a lot of cards in her hand because she didn't burn through any like I did. So now we're on to the next round. And hey, I got two cards in my hand. Um, I can't play this because I would need to discard. If I played it by itself, I'd need to discard three. I can't play this because I'd need to discard two. So this is the turn where I'm going to use all these exploration icons I got and see what I can find. Okay. Uh, it's kind of a little bit of luck based because I don't really have much of a strategy yet, but we'll see what we'll see. Jen, meanwhile, she now, she's got two explore herself, but more importantly, she has one military strength. That means she can conquer this amphibious planet for free. She doesn't, because when you use military, you don't discard cards. She's got one military, she'll be able to take them over for free, and that will increase her income. Let's see here. So that's a planet. Does she want to play? Wow. Um, so if she plays this by itself, then it's free. But if she wants to, she could put this military convoy into play, increasing her military strength. 
Um, but she'd have to discard a card to do it, and she doesn't need to. And you know, so this is a second. Ooh, yeah. So this is uh, the military convoy. In a single turn, you could set. Normally, you can only play one planet per turn, but with this one, you could settle a second military planet with your unused military. So if Jen, this is interesting. If Jen, well, first of all, Jen can see. I'm just exploring. I'm not playing anything, so Jen figures she can play it slow. She's just going to play one card again. All right, so we reveal. Let's do hers first. This is simple. She's a, a military convoy. It's a development. It's by itself, so she gets a discount, and so it is free. All right, although unfortunately, this doesn't increase her income or her victory points. And meanwhile, I'm earning victory points, so that's kind of scary for her. Her total military tier is two, her explore is three, and her income is one. All right, so meanwhile, me... I am exploring. And now here's how this works. This is a reminder. I can tally up the number of eyeballs I have. I've got four plus three more. So I've got seven eyeballs for this exploration. I'm doing an explore of seven plus now. So I've got to explore seven. That means I draw two cards plus my explore. So that's seven plus two. I'm going to draw nine cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They go into my existing hand. And now I have to discard uh, my total explore of seven. So I'm going to net. I'm going to make two more cards total. But I've got a bajillion cards to choose from. A lot more than I did at the beginning. And you better believe with all these cards that I should be able to find some kind of synergy. Some kind of strategy that I can follow with all of these cards. Um, let's see. So here's some military. Let's just see how many military type things are there. And remember, I'm going to have to discard almost all of these cards. I'm, um, so, wow, there's only... All right, so there's this dropships and a rebel world, which I need a ton of military to take over, a smuggler's lair, and a pirate fuel cache. So these three cards, if I choose to keep these and pretty much discard everything else, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So if I keep these three and discard everything else, I already have one military. That's going to let me take over the smuggling lab. Which, that means I'll have two military, um, which isn't enough to do anything else. But I'll have enough to take over the pirate. Then I'll have one, two, three. I'll have three total military, which isn't enough. But then if I get these drop ships into play, um, that'll be three plus three is six, which is just one shy. Once I get seven, I could take over this rebel world, and then I start earning seven points per turn. So that's a possibility. I could dump everything else and once again decide to go after that sweet, sweet military. Or I could drump those, say I don't care about military, and keep four, some combination of four of these cards to go for some other strategy. So I got a lot of choices to make here, folks. And um, you know what? If you want to see what I do, you can go on ahead and hit that I in the top right corner of the screen to go to the extended playthrough. Or instead, you can go to Final Thoughts and hear what Jan and I thought of Jump Drive. Your choice in five, four, three, two, one.